Most apps need scheduling. And what I mean by that is they need some sort of cron job that runs I don't know, say at midnight every night or every hour or once a week or whatever it is. Most apps need this either for reporting or to send notifications or to update some cash or whatever it is. There's so many things that need it. Actually, another one that came to mind is deleting old data. Like if you say you're going to retain data for six months and you have this rolling window, then you might want a cron job to run something in your code base that clears up all the older data. And this is great, but some hosting platforms, especially some serverless ones, especially free ones, don't seem to have this functionality. And if it's serverless, then it's more difficult to run a cron job. But I'm going to show you in this video how you can do it really easily with a few lines of YAML config for any platform and any language. So let me quickly show you my code. I'm using Next.js and JavaScript here, but you could use any framework, any library. What you need to do in your app is create an API endpoint. In here, I have a GET request and I can visit that URL. And I do have a check here to check that the token matches the one that's being passed in. This allows me to protect my API endpoint. So when people discover it, they can't just keep hitting it over and over again. So that's all I want to show you about my endpoint. What it actually does doesn't matter. And I can talk a bit about that later on as well at the end, but I want to give you the good stuff first. So we've got an API endpoint and we're protecting it. And then all you need to do is have a GitHub action where you can run a scheduler. Yes, a cron tab. You have got this cron job. I know GitHub Actions initially was designed to run and be triggered off GitHub events. So a pull request has been created, a commit's been made to the main branch, anything like that. But they actually added schedules. So to do that, you give your GitHub Action a, a name and then you say on, so the trigger. And we're going to, on this on this trigger, we've got workflow dispatch that allows me to run it manually if I want as well. So I don't have to worry about having tokens and those sorts of things like in my browser. I've saving them to GitHub secrets for the action, and then they're available. And this is how it kind of takes it out and appends it to the URL. But we'll get back to that in a second. So now I've got schedule and I want to say this is going to run at 3 a.m. every morning. I'm not going to go into a deep dive in how cron tabs work because there's so much amazing content out there for you to learn that. So if you want to do anything specific, like say, for example, uh, if you want to it to run twice a day or every other day, there are ways you can do that. But just let you know that the asterisk means it runs for any. It's minute, hour, day, month. And then the last one, I forget. I forget which one it is. Remind me in the comments below. But my point is that most of the time we want to do things daily. So these three are asterisks. So they just run for any day. And then we set what kind of hour and what uh, minute we want it to, to run. Most people do it at midnight. It was actually recommended even by Git the Hub themselves recommended not to run it at midnight because there's a huge surge at midnight. Everyone runs it at midnight. So do it at 1am or kind of, I don't know, 35 minutes past midnight, something like that. And then we've, you get your jobs as you normally would. I'm running Ubuntu and giving it a name. I'm actually using a, a GitHub action from the marketplace to do this. You can um, use curl and you can, you can use JavaScript and GitHub actions. Now there's so many things you can do, but I felt this was the, the easiest. So I include this action and all it needs is a URL. I pass it my URL. And it, this is API system checks. And then I pass it the, the token from the, the secrets to protect that URL. And, you know, that's basically it. And so at 3 a.m. every day, this GitHub action is going to run. And we can even see on GitHub the different actions that I have running on the health check project. And if I click on run checks, you can see that it has run every day. And uh, that's awesome. And like I said, you can run it manually. So I could just say run it now if I wanted to as well. So it does work. And if it fails, I'll get a response here and it will fail. And if it passes, it will log what your API returns. So it depends on what you return. In this case, my API does return a box Body. So here you can see it runs, it ran zero kind of updates, zero failed, 11 were ignored, and there were two errors. So that's, uh, yeah, super interesting to have a bit of information. I would recommend returning something useful and not just like true or false or anything like that. So what do you think? I think that's a pretty simple way to have a scheduler in your
your app. And again, because there's no actual um, code in the GitHub action, as you can see, it's just YAML, then that will work for any language. And then your project, wherever you deploy it to, you just keep that the same as normal. And the other brilliant thing is the scheduler, if you wanted to change how often it runs, then it's in your code base. It's just in the GitHub workflow directory. Uh, you're not managing a UI somewhere else where you're trying to you know, click drop downs and you forget what it's set to and you've got logins and passwords. It's still all in one place. So it kind of is part of your code, even if it is slightly separate. But I hope that helps. Uh, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe below if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video.